This year on New Mexico in Focus, the issue of violence has come up many times. We've talked about concerns about crimes committed by young people, the death of a four-year-old in a road rage incident in Albuquerque, and the shooting deaths of two police officers in 2015. Attorney General Hector Balderas is currently organizing meetings of leaders across many departments and agencies to look at repeat offenders. Our producer Sarah Gustava sat down with the AG this week to discuss what he's hearing so far and what could be done to address violence at different levels across the state. Attorney General, thanks for sitting down with us this week. Thank you for having me. You convened the Violent Crime Review Team earlier this year to look at repeat offenders. This was following the shooting death of Rio Rancho Police Officer Greg Nigel Benner. And his alleged killer had multiple past convictions. Since then, we've also had an APD officer, Daniel Webster, who was shot and killed. A lot of people are thinking about repeat offenders, are talking about that and wondering uh, what can be done, what should be done. Um, what do we know now about what's going on that, that you're looking at to try to address this issue? Well, clearly New Mexico has a public safety crisis. We're number two in violent crimes uh, in the nation. And quite frankly, people have lost confidence that the system itself, the criminal justice system, truly is keeping New Mexico safe. I convened the Violent Crimes Case Review Task Force involving 28 agencies to look at where there was systemic failures and a lack of accountability across the board, not just from the justice systems that are involved, like the courts and corrections, but also going back to CYFD and the Department of Education. And so we are in phase two. We're making a lot of progress and we hope to have a report in early January with some game-changing solutions to really make New Mexico safer. We certainly have the technology to track people and to know their, their history and their past. What's keeping all those agencies from communicating that information to each other? Well, I think we just have to modernize collaboration. Clearly, they're not sharing enough information. Andrew Romero was not appropriate for public release. And furthermore, when he absconded, uh, no one actually went to go pick him up. And quite frankly, the system is being overwhelmed uh, by uh, the production of too many victims and criminals uh, running rampant in New Mexico. What are you hearing from folks so far in the task force? Well, it's fascinating. We have some of the most talented law enforcement officials, social workers, and educators. What we're finding is that while we're focused on high-risk individuals, clearly we need to have more officers, more accountability, and target um, high-risk offenders. We already know that many of the officers and educators and social workers are also very worried about what we're doing on the prevention side. We are not doing enough as a state to prevent violence and prevent drug abuse. And the system right now is creating more Andrew Romero's at an alarming rate. And law enforcement firsthand knows that uh, we all need to join law enforcement in making communities safer on the prevention side as well as targeting violent offenders. Now on the prosecution side, we've sat at this table and talked about how there's not enough funding, there's not enough resources. You've reached out to Kerry Brandenburg here in Berlino, Berlino County, offering some resources and support. Why is that? Well, it's embarrassing. Another black eye for New Mexico is the legislature does not target funding to some of the high-risk, more dangerous zip codes. We know the families that are in crisis. We know the criminals reside in certain zip codes, yet we have not targeted true accountability so that that funding gets to those zip codes. We'll go and build a spaceport with relatively no accountability, hundreds of millions of dollars going out the door, but when law enforcement and certain zip codes in our communities need social workers, therapy, uh, law enforcement, somehow that funding's not targeted. Secondly, what we did is uh, we can no longer wait when the recent shooting of Lily Garcia, the four-year-old child, and our uh, officer Webster uh, occurred in our community, we knew we needed to lend some of our prosecutors to Kerry Brandenburg to ensure that if there's a high-risk case, like any one of these, that we were willing to take over that case and or lend some technical assistance. We all have to get into this type of fight and make sure that the most difficult, challenging cases are being managed appropriately. It's going to cost money. Do you think there's the political will for that? I believe so. One of the components about this violent crimes case review task force that's different is once the recommendations come out in January, I've impaneled what's called a community heroes group of leaders that have suffered because of the injustice in New Mexico. Julie Benner, the will widow of Officer Nigel Benner, is going to lead a group of citizen leaders, people who have been harmed by the inaction in New Mexico, and really make sure that the legislature and leaders truly implement some of these reforms. And so I don't want elected politicians or 
uh, professionals leading this cause. I want to make sure that we lead with community heroes who have really personally been impacted by the crime and violence in New Mexico. We're already also looking ahead at the legislature. It's coming up in a few months. Uh, some lawmakers are talking about amending New Mexico's three strikes law, making it tougher. Do you think that's the answer? I think that um, I'm encouraging all ideas. I think everything should be on the table, changes in statutory law. Um, I think the crisis is much bigger. I think that we're not using public safety dollars in, uh, adequately to the uh, service providers that need them. I think there's also a lack of accountability between agency and agency. And so there needs to be some systemic reforms. And we also need to focus on the children that are being victimized and then criminalized. And so I think that I welcome those ideas. I think the legislature can get more involved. But I want to make sure they put their money where their mouth is and uh, truly invest in public safety at the front end of the spectrum and the back end. Mm. Three strikes has been problematic in some other states like California. There's been some changes there to actually go back the other direction again. Yeah, I really have two simple standards and I'm, I'm working with community leaders um, uh, every day. The first is that it should be a smart attack on crime. Uh, just getting tough on crime no longer works. We need to get smart on how we attack and target uh, the offenders that need accountability but also the uh, offenders that aren't appropriate for to taking up jail space and that could be beneficial uh, citizens in our community. And secondly, it has to meet the accountability standard. There has to be real dollars and real resources behind some of these ideas. Uh, if you can meet those two standards, um, it's probably an idea that the public safety community would welcome. Why do you think that leadership right now needs to come from partially from the state level, from your office? Well, I think New Mexico has been asleep at the wheel for a long time. I think that you have leaders talking about tax credits and job creation. Uh, the truth of the matter is the jobs will never come until we secure uh, safe communities. And so I'm encouraging whether you're a school teacher, a lawmaker, a reporter, uh, or a law enforcement or professional, we should be focusing on safe communities and healthy communities first. And then I, we, I believe that the economic policies and prosperity will then soon develop. We've been uh, far too behind in how we uh, combat some of the dangerous situations in New Mexico. And you also mentioned earlier having some folks leading some of those groups. Local level, what do you want to see from people as far as leadership? I, I'm encouraging uh, citizens to write the letters that truly tell their story. Uh, too, many, too often we've had right now families that are being impacted by child abuse human trafficking, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. It's important that New Mexico collectively, and I mean uh, police departments to mayoral offices all the way to the governor's office and the AG's office, that we take some collective responsibility with a public safety plan that truly uh, uh, embraces everybody's involvement. So uh, people need to get involved and tell their stories. Most often, uh, tragically, uh, the families are right in our backyard that have been impacted by having a weak criminal justice system. I think we can simply do better. And looking ahead to the legislature, do you see yourself and folks working across the aisle, working with Governor Martinez, who's a former district attorney, on these issues? I do. Uh, you know, public safety is a nonpartisan issue. We're starting to realize, though, that when you ignore public safety issues, you're also hindering your public schools. You're also hindering your economic development. So we're going to work hard hand in hand. Uh, one of our top priorities is closing a child pornography loophole. It's embarrassing that in New Mexico there are loopholes to get around the system. And we want to make sure that we protect children first. We will ask you back to come in after the report comes out next year. Thank you so much for sitting down with us this week. Thank you.